Welcome back to another uh, Space Invaders in P5.js video. In the last one, we just went over quickly how to create our player on the screen, get our UI up and loaded uh, so that we're ready for, the for this next part. In this video, we're going to be creating the player input and making sure that the player always stays on the screen. So the first thing you want to be able to do is create the player or like have the player move. And, and in order to do that, we need to recognize player input. Uh, if we head over to the reference, we can see how to do that. Over here, uh, we want to scroll down all the way to events and right over here. So a few different things we can do. We have key is pressed, key pressed, key released, key typed, and key is down. Uh, for this video, we're going to be using key is down because it allows us to do what we want. If we wanted to do key pressed, the problem with doing that is it only gets the key the uh, moment it's pressed. So you can't hold the key. It'll only work f for the first uh, time you click it. With keys down, you can always check like, oh, is that key still held down? Then keep moving right, which is what we want to be able to do since our Space Invader guy is moving left and right. So we see here we have a, a small example of how to use it. So we can just easily do key is down and then our key. Um, just like in this example, we're going to be using the left and right arrows to move left and right. So that's pretty cool. And with that said, we can uh, get started. The first thing we want to do is create a new function. I'm going to call this player input, although it doesn't really matter what you decide to call this. I think this is just more useful. Uh, I'm going to create an if statement. And this in this one, I think it's is key down. Yep, or key is down. I want to go check the left arrow, so I'm going to do left underscore arrow. Only this one, and then I'm going to, for, before putting something inside, I'm going to go make the second one. So else if key, key is down, right arrow. So those are both our arrow combinations, which now set up. And the next thing we want to do is to be able to increment our speed. Or not our speed, but our position. So we, since we have our player x here, which is contained here, we can do a player.x, then minus equal number for going to the left, and player.x plus equals the number go to the right. And we don't really know what number we want here yet, so what I'm going to do is actually create another property under player called speed, and I'm just going to give this a value of 4. And then I can go down here, call player.speed. And this just lets us keep track of our speed so we don't have to write the same number over and over again. Like this, we have player.speed4. But if we try doing anything right now, nothing will happen. And that's because we haven't linked this up to update every single frame like all of our other functions here. To do that, we just have to go over to our drawer function and write it in. If we do that, we should be able to move it left and right. But there's one problem. If we try to go way off to the left of the screen and don't stop, we can see that our character, our little ship, um, keeps going to the left, right off the screen. And the same thing is true for the right. And we don't really want that to happen. We want it to stop once it gets there. So in order to uh, stop that from happening, we just have to put a small check in the code that checks like, oh, are you at the side of the screen? If you are, make sure you stay at the uh, corner instead of going past it. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new if statement. So we're going to do an if at the, at the left side and an if you're at the right side. So we can do if, um, and since we already have the player's x position, we can do player.x is less than 0. Right, because 0 is the left side of the screen. And if, you're, or if your position is less than that, so you're negative, we can just set that back to zero. And if we test that, it should stop at the corner. One thing you might notice is that we actually can go halfway through, and that's because the position is taken from the center of the rectangle here. So if we want to fix this issue of the uh, player going like all the way to the, like halfway through the side of the screen, what we have to do is put a minus 30, because that's going to be half our width up here. 
and put a 30 in the player position. That'll make sure it always sets to the corner here. And if you want to streamline this a bit so we don't have to write 30 a bunch, we can put a width property in here. Put a 60. Change this to width. Player dot width. And change this to pl player dot width over two. And same thing here. Now it'll work the same way. It's just that we just have instant access to our width now. And for the right side, it's a little bit different, and that's because we have to check the right side of the screen. Since we know that our canvas is 800 by 800, we could just use 800 and go from there. But we could change that number at any time, and it'll, it would be kind of a pain to uh, re-put or re-change this one number every single time we changed it. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to go check if it is less or if it's greater than our width of the screen. So width will just get the uh, whatever the width the canvas is. Player.x is equal to width minus player.width over 2. And there you go. Now we're stuck on the sides of the screen. So I know this video was a little short, but I wanted to make sure we specifically covered player input since this is very different from what we've done in the uh, in the past few videos. In the next one, we're going to go over how to make the player shoot a laser up at the screen.